Okay, forgive me because this is gonna be mm, maybe not perfect. I didn't script this, but I get asked a lot of questions about pee pads and understandably, because I talk about it a lot in my posts and you can see them in all my posts as well. And I feel like this is a lifesaver. I mean, I, I went through several different types of potty bins and uh, both the plastic and then cardboard types. Um, I've also gone through pellets, uh, through no dust cat litter, which is basically a low to no dust um, newspaper product. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on the market and people will make some wild claims about what is safe for animals. And I'm gonna tell you, a lot of the stuff that's in use is not safe for your animals, not even your cats. Um, so be very careful with litter products, um, as in avoid them. <laughs> that would be my two cents. I would avoid them for cats too, but the thing is I haven't, I, I haven't had cats in a couple decades, so I don't know what's out on the market now. I just know if you're gonna do a litter for your cats, if you have a multi-breed family, um, you know, definitely go with low uh, dust and preferably things that are not uh, full of chemistry in order to keep the scent down. Uh, there's a lot of natural products out, natural quote unquote, there's a lot of products out there that are actually truly safe for your animal, but most of the time it's because they have very few things in them and they are made uh, to basically not impact your animals and they don't breathe it in, they don't walk with it on their paws, um, they don't consume it. Uh, and that's really the only way that it can be safe. So in that sense, pee pads are safer. They are not completely safe because anything where an animal can dig into it, breathe it in, get it in their mouth, get it on their feet, get it on their fur, lick it off their fur, obviously it's not gonna be that safe. Um, so pee pads are safer because as long as your babies <laughs> are well behaved and they don't slice through everything, um, you're gonna find that it's a lot easier to clean, it's a lot easier to manage, and they don't track this stuff. Um, so even if they're standing on the pee pad and using it, they're not tracking anything into their paws, into their fur, onto their tail, they're not breathing anything else in. Um, so ferrets, well, a lot of animals, but we'll say ferrets in particular because that's what I'm talking about today. Um, they do tend to be uh, particular about smells and scents. Um, and this is in every aspect of their life. So if they've urinated and defecated somewhere, you're going to find that that spot is quote unquote marked, which means they've used it, they can smell it, they go back to it because it's a safe place. They can use that again and again, knowing that, hey, I was able to do this once, I can do it again. Um, it's very difficult to train them away from smells. Uh, so you can put stuff down, but the reality is they're gonna go back to what they smell. And it's really hard to get that out of the floor, out of the carpet. So a lot of the times, um, honestly, if you can find a good cleaner, use a cleaner, but then put down pee pads, put down something that keeps them, like even if they go back to that spot, they're gonna you know, use the pee pad instead of just going straight on the bare floor. Um, that's the best advice I can give. So the other part to this equation as we're staring into my cage, um, one of my cages, is I do kind of this combination. So I'm gonna show you right here. I have a reusable uh, woven pee pad uh, at the very base of the cage. And instead of using floor guards or what else are they called? The covers that people make for the cages. I use these really handy uh, washable pee pads because they're backed really nice. And what happens is they keep the scent out of the plastic bottoms of the cage. And the reason why that's so important is like I was saying earlier, you cannot untrain scent. So if they've marked the floors of the cage from the beginning, you're gonna have a hard time getting them not to smell that through whatever you put down. Um, so I try to start with, uh, when I got this new cage, I decided to start with the pee pad covers first because my previous experience told me it's gonna be very difficult if they actually defecate on the plastic or on a cover that bleeds through to the plastic, it's gonna be impossible to get them to stop doing that. So um, 
you know, lesson learned <laughs> in the past. Um, so with the way that I set these up, I'll open this really quick, um, depending on what the floor is doing. So what I found out is when I put the smaller version of this, this guy here, uh, they would dig it out and throw it around. They didn't love it. I don't know why. They don't bother the bottom one, but they bother the top one. So this one is a double layer of just pee pads. And the way that I do this one is I double up even the larger one. <laughs> Theo's gonna demonstrate how they dig stuff up. Hey, oh, troublemaker. Come here. Okay, so um, I, I double this, this layer as well because that allows them again, to do as much of the mess as they want. And hopefully it'll be guarded by three layers. <laughs> that is my fingers crossed. Uh, so far it's been working. And the other thing about this is, so the bottom layer is attached outside. It's clippied and I'll, I'll have links for all this stuff, by the way, I've, I have researched and spent a ton of money. I'm not saying my way is the best. I'm just saying my way has functioned really well for a crazy chaotic life and the time I save with this setup is amazing. Um, so you don't have to do it this way, just take what is useful for you. Uh, so anyway, so I clip, I fold and clip everything to the outside, then this layer is free. It's just folded and layered on top. So this is the, this is the top part that they defecate on, they urinate on, and then when I'm done, I just lift and I roll it out and then we start over. So it's very fast, very efficient. The other thing is if they decide to flip up these layers of pee pads, like maybe they dig in the back, um, the nice thing is there's a pee pad on the bottom and it's clipped to the cage. So they can't really pull that off. Um, and then I just change that all out the next time. Uh, so the same down here, you can see like this is just basically set inside. And what I've learned also is if I build up this outer layer, to the top if I were just to put the pee pad in and kind of turn it into a box my ferrets will rip it out of the cage they hate that um, so I've done this this folding technique it not only strengthens uh, the pee pads themselves so the edging is stronger but my ferrets don't dig it out because they can see past the bars so they don't feel as claustrophobic and they don't feel like they have to tear it out to to make a point um, I pay a lot of attention to their mannerisms and behaviors, and I feel like the more I've done that, the less drama we've had. Um, now, that's not saying I have no drama. We still have drama, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely reduced the levels of drama. I have much less tantrums for my ferrets, much less problems putting them away, um, much less problems getting them to go where they need to go, or where I want them to go specifically, uh, not where they need to, but where I would like them to go. So this is, this is my lovely little setup. Now, if we're talking about costs, uh, cause I've been asked that a lot. Um, I shop for all this stuff on Amazon. I know Amazon is an evil corporation, but I'm gonna be honest with you. My life is chaotic and I'm <laughs> trying to keep things as affordable and minimal as possible on my time and energy every day. So I have a subscription set up uh, specifically for these things. Otherwise I shop local. Um, so for this subscription, these are carbon, what are they called? They're like a carbon charcoal mix and they tend to reduce the odor uh, by quite a lot. And the reason I will say that is ferrets themselves don't reek. Uh, they actually smell pretty nice. So a lot of people will say they smell like corn chips or grape, like grapefruit candy um, or other things. I mean, Artemis sometimes smells like a mix of very light urine and flowers, which is a weird combination, let's be honest. Um, but uh, like Gray sometimes smells like corn chips uh, since he's in, in frame right now. But uh, a lot of the odor that people complain about can come from ferret defecation and urination, much like cats and other animals as well. Uh, and also the oils in their coat getting onto their bedding as well as some of the defecation and urination because if they've urinated and they haven't gotten all of it off their bodies, um, naturally they're gonna rub it into their bedding. So one of the things that I would stress is if you want your ferrets to smell amazing, make sure you're changing the pads 
constantly. I mean, I, I do this, I have nine ferrets, so it's a little bit different. There's eight in one cage. Um, and so for this cage, I'm changing out the pee pad, the top layer, uh, anywhere from two to three times a day in a, like in a, um, 18 to 20 hour period. And the reason that is, is one to keep them going in a clean place. So they'll keep going in that place and two to help reduce the odor because it smells. I mean, that urine and feces smell. That's, that's a basic straightforward thing, right? We all agree. Um, and so for the bedding, the same idea, I change it out weekly um, and if anything is smell, I have a huge stash of, of bedding for them. Uh, so if anything is smelling funny, uh, or if anything looks not quite right, I'm immediately swapping those out, even if I'm not doing a full cage change. Um, so it's really good to have extra accessories, extra blankets, extra whatever. Uh, same goes for the stairs you'll see in the cage. These are also came from Amazon. You can buy them at different places. Amazon just had the best price. It's all from the same company. Um, and so with these, the covers can be changed, they're washable. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of a mess going on right now because again, when they walk through the pee pad, sometimes they get pee somewhere else. Um, so these get changed out weekly as well. They all get thrown in the wash uh, while the ferrets are sleeping and then the wash cycle completes and the dryer cycle happens and then I put everything back. Uh, so it's pretty fast. It can be done within, in under six hours. Um, so while they're sleeping is the perfect time for that. Uh, and also I have backups of these as well. So if they're getting washed and the ferrets are running around, there's, I have other stairs. Um, again, it's an investment uh, to save you time and energy and to keep your ferrets cleaner. So again, uh, do what works for you and obviously what works for your babies. Um, so with that being said, that is, that is the structure. Um, so the, I have these on a monthly delivery cycle. I get small ones and large ones. These are the, let's see, I will include links, but I think these are like a 27 by 32 uh, size pee pad washable. Um, I have about 10 of those uh, because realistically they will make messes uh, even up here on the top layer. You'll see I have them on every level and um, whether or not they urinate on them, which usually they don't. They've been really good about not doing it anywhere but the bottom of the cage. Uh, sometimes they'll throw a tantrum with their food or their water and you know, you'll have to switch it out. Um, so for these other big things, these are about the same dimensions of the cage, I believe, when they're fully spread out. So they're like a 24 or 27 by 36. Um, these are Oh my gosh, how much are these? I get like three boxes of these, which is about what I go through a month because I have so many ferrets and so many changes at change outs. Um, and I think in grand total, I may spend close to $100 a month um, in these products. Granted, if you only got a couple ferrets, you're not changing this out as much, um, nowhere near. And you're probably not paying as much because I'm buying them in bulk. Um, so I would say, Oh, likely you would be changing them daily, uh, one time, probably in the morning. Um, that's a 24 hour period. If you want to keep them extra clean, do that twice. Every 12 hours is a good cycle to be on. Kind of like if you're taking a medication, I guess, uh, that would be the same. You, you change them out at the same time every day. So whatever you start your morning and whatever you go to sleep, uh, that would be your cycle. And that will keep your babies and your cage smelling amazing. Um, so that, that's pretty much it. I mean, honestly, it's, uh, it's a pretty straightforward, I tried to make things pretty straightforward. Hopefully this is not too rambly and it's useful. Um, if you want to actually see me line everything, uh, please let me know and I can create a video of just a DIY, hopefully short <laughs> DIY about how to install them, how to fold them, how to gauge the size of what you're putting into your cage based on your cage dimensions. Um, because all of those I think are maybe important if if it's you're doing this for the first time. Uh, for me, it took a couple tries just based on once I got the size uh, delivered to me, I was like, oh, right, I should probably get it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, depending on what I was using it for. Um, there's also squares that go in the corner of the house. Those are smaller, uh, because the ferrets don't use those constantly throughout the day. They only use it during playtime. So I can afford to be a little bit cheap on that side. And that's helpful for obviously our floors. 
Um, all right. Well, I hope this was interesting and uh, let me know what you need. I'm happy to support.